we've all seen what the gardens of Lily House look like when the tourists are around. We see what they post to IG and on Facebook, all oh, that pretty cocoa mulch. But what does it really look like when the tourists go home and the cameras go off? Today, we'll get a secret inside look to what the garden is like after three weeks of abject neglect. We've done practically nothing for the last three weeks except eat the garden. Hardly any work, no weeding. We haven't even mown the lawn in three weeks. Today on Lily House, we'll see what it looks like for real. So here's where we normally enter the garden. And you can see one of the concepts for aesthetic design that I often talk about, the difference between soft edges and hard edges. So that we can see where some of the edges of our garden that are out of sight are kept in much more plant-controlled edges, while the central axis of the garden tends to have much cleaner edges. Here's our famous oregano and lavender edging. After the lavenders had the first harvest for the season, so there are no pretty flowers, and the hedge has not been trimmed in probably about a month either. So it is also looking a little bit less shapely than we normally like to show in the pictures. And here's a quick overview of the central axis of the garden. You can see what things are basically looking like from the house, from our front door. The lemongrass here provides such a nice architectural element to the garden and we love to harvest it to eat. Here you get a nice look at the oregano hedge. You know, actually, for considering that it hasn't had much in the way of maintenance, this guild still looks pretty darn good. So, I still think this is beautiful and would look lovely in any one suburban lawn. Now the oregano edging does require harvest in order to keep it looking like box. There are actually some other things that are edible that we could use to replace that with if we wanted something that would be a little slower growing and require trimming only say once per season. It would still provide a nice yield for us unlike box. And we've shown pictures of this polyculture all season long as it's evolved and now we see some other annuals that have been plugged in there, another summer squash that's a late succession. See cucumbers in the background and some nice tomatoes ripening up. There in the far background you see a cardoon bulb. Now this is a kind of cardoon that produces pretty large bulbs, almost comparable to an artichoke. The monarda has just been a star of the garden this season. I love the combinations of the monardas, the color echoes of the purple, along with the foliage color echoes of some of these blue varieties of brassica that we have. I want to give you a look into some of these beds here, a little more of a close-up. Um, we've done most of our chop and drop and thinning for the season, so at this point a lot of these plants like the brassicas in this brassica bed are just going to be competing with the perennials a little bit. Things are pretty well thinned out to the spacings that I want there. Um, so there's, I mean, we're not really doing anything more in the way of weeding or mulching or anything like that. I may still thin out a few things as I harvest, like those basils that are being crowded out by that ground cherry. Um, but otherwise, this is about the state that the garden is going to be in through the fall. At this point, we're doing, I mean... It's going to be averaging an hour per week, maybe, of work if I get around to doing some work later today. But, really, it's, it's been more like five minutes of non-harvest uh, garden labor for the last three weeks. Maybe before that, two hours a week, uh, the week before that. So that's about where we're at on maintenance time this part, time of the season. Here's a bummer, man. See that? That's an amaranth that got clobbered along with some corn. Yeah, I do did that. He was a little jerk. But, uh, you know, I'm mostly okay with it. We're going to have to get in here with some pepper or something like that. I'm going to have to really start uh, patrolling the, the borders of this garden. We got some of our first beautiful ears of corn in the milk stage. 
Um, total bummer. I haven't even had any yet, so the, the deer beat me to it. So in a couple of mounds here, we probably lost about 20, what could have been as many as like 24, 25 ears of corn for the season. This garden is still going to produce hundreds of ears of corn. Uh, but you know, one of our long-term goals was to get this whole front garden fenced in or enclosed, uh, at least at the, the edges. That's something we've just never had the money and time to, to do the way we wanted to do yet. So we're going to get there, and maybe the deer has taught us that we need to prioritize it this season. Um, so far, most of our pest maintenance has been a matter of deterrence and really low labor kinds of systems. And it's worked pretty darn well. We, you know, maybe lost a quarter of our weight of carrots that we would have produced for the season because of a deer. We had some damage to this mulberry tree due to some deer. Um, overall, you know, the lesson is to us, what do you want to get out of the garden? ROI is more important than total yield, and figuring out systems to live with wildlife is more important um, to us. You know, we've put in more effort into growing annuals this season than we ever have before, but, you know, that might have quadrupled our workload in the spring, in work time. But it's probably only going to raise our total yield for the season maybe like 25%. That's a really interesting lesson. And even if we hadn't had the problems with the wildlife, maybe it would have been like 30% for a massive increase of our labor. Here's our edible hedgerow. At this time of year, you see lots of elderberries we're going to get and lots of blackberries. We've been pretty much... Um, this is one of our favorite parts of our garden, is our edible hedgerow. All of the berries and fruit that it produces for, like, really, really, really little work. And also things like these lovely roses, uh, which really make me happy. So, from down here we can get a view of that whole hedgerow. Uh, and you'll see the Three Sisters garden, and an overview of our whole garden. So there's that just glorious uh, variegated corn. <laughs> a five-gallon bucket that I use to water trees. That's a nice trick. You poke a hole in the bottom of a five-gallon bucket. You can take it around for most of your fruit trees. They want about five gallons of water per week. So a five-gallon bucket with some holes in the bottom so it soaks out slowly is the perfect way to water fruit trees. And there goes a hummingbird just passed in front of us. Um, very briefly, you probably saw that. So, overview of our garden from here. Now, it's been dry, so the lawn has been growing really slowly. And our just horrible, um, you know, our soils before we prep them are just horrible. So, that saved me a lot of time on mowing. Uh, but that's an interesting thing. I don't actually plan on fixing those soils much because once we get into summer um, it means that I really only have to mow the lawn about once a month and I am way cool with that. And let's take a quick overview of our back garden as well. So this garden has probably had, uh, actually my mom mowed the lawn back here uh, about four weeks ago before she left for, for a few weeks. Um, so it's actually had some fairly recent maintenance in terms of that, but that's pretty much it. So there you have it. You now, the reason why I made this video is I want people to have a good idea, a good expectation about what this kind of garden can look like, what it really looks like um, when it's not being all polished up for our tours. Now, a lot of people get to see it in this situation, um, but you know, for some people, especially this back garden, it's probably beyond their comfort zone for for being wild. And other people love it. This is exactly what they like. And they think it's too manicured when we have it all fixed up. So, I just want you to see and get an idea and have that expectation for what a forest garden can really look like when it's being left to just kind of wild manage for a while and not getting maintenance and keep input.